Lakshmi Tantra, Chapter 5 Evolution of the World from Prakriti I am the primary I-hood, egoity, of Hari, Narayana, which has evolved into all forms, which is eternal, which incorporates pure bliss and consciousness, and which is absolutely inert. I, the same one, stimulated by my urge to create, have evolved the pure creation with an infinitesimally small particle of myself, consisting of a form containing all six of the divine attributes and embodying the pure creation. Without changing my own transcendental form, a small part of myself called Mahalakshmi evolves into the complex of the three gunas. In the process of evolution, when I am dominated by Rajas, I am called Mahashri, Lakshmi, the Supreme Goddess. My form dominated by Tamas is regarded as Mahamaya, Kali. My form dominated by Sattva is regarded as Mahavidya, Saraswati. I myself Mahashri and those two ladies, Mahamaya and Mahavidya, are all three stimulated to create, and according to our three forms, have created three couples of male and female forms. The couple created to tally with my form is envisioned as beautifully formed. You should know that this couple, pregnant with the golden cosmic egg Hiranyagarbha, has lotus-shaped eyes, is handsome and seated on lotuses, and is a mental creation based on my form created from a part of Pradyumna. The male of the couple is known as Dhata, Vidhi, Virinchi, or Brahma while the female is called Shri, Padma, Kamala, or Lakshmi. The pair that is created mentally in Mahamaya from a part of Sankarshan possesses three eyes and is beautiful in all parts of the body. There the male is called Rudra, Shankara, Stanu, Kapardi, or Trilochana. Trayi, Ishwara, Bhasa, Vidya, and Akshara, also Kamadenu, Go, and Saraswati, are the names by which the female of that couple is known. Born from Mahavidya, from a part of Aniruddha, is the couple whose male is called Keshava, Vishnu, Prishikesha, Vasudev, or Janardana. The female there is known as Uma, Gauri, Sati, and Chanda, is full of virtue and loyalty. By my order, Trayi became Brahma's wife, Gauri became Rudra's wife, and Ambuja, Padma, became Vasudeva's wife. With these evolutions of Rajas, Tamas, and Sattva as the three couples, the description of the first phase of creation is concluded. Now listen, I shall describe the middle phase of that evolution of the Gunas. Virinchi, along with Bhasa, produced the cosmic egg. At my command, Shankara with Gauri broke it open. Brahma created Pradhan or Prakriti, the primary germ, original source of the visible or material universe, in that egg. And Keshava along with Padma preserved it. 
Thus is described the middle phase of evolution of the gunas. Now listen to me with attention while I describe the third phase. Pradhan, that exists in the cosmic egg, consists of both reality and unreality. It has the complex of the three gunas as its source. It is of the nature of vyoma, the void. It is the source of all that is manifested and is itself undecaying. Then, having turned this principle of pradhana that is called avyakta, unmanifested, into water, God Hrishikesh and Padma, accompanied by Vidya, lay on that water as he took to meditative sleep, and she who is called Mahakali became his sleep consisting of tamas. Then, O Purandara, when he was lying there asleep, a lotus grew out of his navel. This pankaja, lotus, which did not grow from panka, mud, is called kalamaya, that which consists of time. It is also called jaladhikarana, padma, adhara, the substratum, pushkara, chakra, the wheel of time, and pundarika. Chakra Both the realities, the conscious and the non-conscious, have been described. The sentient is said to consist of consciousness, the insentient of the complex of the three gunas. How is finite time to be conceived? Shri Finite time is a component of the non-conscious and is composed of the finite three gunas. During cosmic evolution, the triad of Bala, Aishwarya, and Virya, previously described amongst the six divine attributes, evolves into time. That triad itself is changeless, whereas only its aspect of three gunas evolves. Kala and Kalya, time and its effect, are said to be non-conscious. Time, consisting of me, acts as an instrument used by my Shakti Mahashri to create the diversity of objects. Emerging from that lotus, which consists of eternal time and sprouts from Vishnu's navel, holding the Vedas and accompanied by Trayi, the same mighty Brahma appeared, who formerly emanated from Lakshmi and is called Hiranyagarbha. Trayi is the woman who emanated from Mahakali. Thus this couple, Brahma and Trayi, was born from the lotus grown out of Vishnu's navel. This lotus and the couple arising from it compose, as ancient savants describe, the evolving principle called Mahan, consisting of tamas and characterized by greatness. These three aspects are the lotus, representing prana, the life principle, the male representing Hiranyagarbha, and the female representing buddhi, intelligence. The quality of the life principle is spanda, vibration. That of buddhi is adhyavasaya, decisive thinking. The quality of punks, the male, is twofold, dharma, and adharma, karmic merit and demerit. The qualities of dharma are merit, jnana, knowledge, vairagya, renunciation, and aishwarya, sovereignty. 
Opposed to these is adharma, demerit, ignorance, attachment, and disempowerment. To benefit my own creation, I stimulated Mahat by penetrating it. When so stimulated, Ahankara, the ego principle, evolved out of it. The wife of Shankara, Gauri, who emanated from Mahamaya, evolved into Abhimati, egohood, referring all objects to oneself. Penetrating Ahankara, I caused it to evolve further. Under influence of the three gunas, Ahankara then became threefold. The Tamas aspect is called Bhutadi, the origin of all elements producing the cosmos and microcosmos. Now listen to its description. The Tanmatra, potential element of Shabda, sound, evolved out of Bhutadi, and sound emerged from that Tanmatra. The Sparsha Tanmatra, touch potential, arose out of the sound element when stimulated by me. The touch element evolved out of the touch potential. From that touch element, Rupa, the form potential, arose. From that, when stimulated by me, appeared the element of the primeval form, followed by Rasa, the liquid potential. This liquid potential, when stimulated by me, produced the element of liquid, from which emanated Gandha, the smell potential. That, in turn, when stimulated by me, produced the element of Gandha, pure smell. This is the classification of elements. Matras, element potentials, are the subtle elements. The others are gross elements. The qualities such as sound, etc., belonging to the elements of sound, etc., are mere visarga, products of the gross elements, and have no separate existence. The manifested qualities of the gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas, namely shantatva, tranquility, goratva, movement, and mudhatva, ignorance, are absent in the subtle elements. That is why the subtle elements are regarded as possessing the quality of tanmatra, elements of potentiality. The others are therefore said to possess grossness, since they cause experiential pleasure and pain. The gross elements are each said to have three states, the subtle, the pitrajas, characteristics inherited from father, and the prabhutas, abundance. The diverse objects of the material world, such as a pitcher, etc., are classified as prabhutas. The pitrajas consist of those who are born through the conjunction of semen with blood. The subtle state consists of the five elements, akasha, air, fire, water, and earth, that form the subtle body. This concludes the gradual evolution from ahankara as bhutadi, the principle from which the elements evolve. Of the two other components of ahankara, based on sattva and rajas, the component consisting of sattva is called vaikarika, by interaction with goodness. The other is called taijasa, passionate, by the learned. Part 2. Evolution of the Creation now hear how creation evolved from these components. The cognitive senses, such as the eye, ear, etc., emerge from vaikarika ahankara. 
The active senses, such as the organ of speech, etc., evolve from Taijasa Ahankara. Manas, which is a combination of the cognitive and conative senses, emanates from both Vaikarika and Taijasa Ahankara. The organs of hearing, touch, sight, taste, and smell are called the five cognitive senses, and their inherent shakti, buddhindriya, or jnana shakti, is myself. Speech, hands, feet, the organs of reproduction and excretion, these five active senses possess the kriya shakti, which is also myself. My own vijnana shakti, power of intelligence, descending through the successive stages of evolution, directs the cognitive senses towards their relevant objects. My own kriya shakti, power of action, descending through the successive stages of evolution, directs the active senses to their respective functions. The object of the ear is sound, and hearing is its function. The object of the skin is contact, and touching is its function. The object of the eye is form, and seeing is its function. Flavor is the object of the tongue, and tasting is its function. Odor is the object of the nose, and smelling is its function. The vritti, modifications or functioning of the sensory organs in relation to their respective objects, is called alochana, seeing, perceiving, and implies cognition of the undifferentiated object. Dish, the four points of the compass, lightning, the sun, the moon and the earth are the presiding deities of the five senses. Their respective objects, sound, etc., are called elements. The cognitive senses consisting of sense organs are called adhyatma. Since the five senses emanate from the sattva component of space, etc., these five sense organs of hearing, etc., are said to belong to their respective elements. Sound is the object of the organ of speech, and speech is said to be its function. That which is held is the object of the organ of holding, the hands. Destination is the object of the organ of movement, feet, and moving is its function. Pleasant things are the objects of the reproductive organ, and enjoyment is its function. What is excreted is the object of the organ of excretion, and excretion is its function. The five active sense organs of holding, etc., relate to five objects. Agni, fire, Indra, Vishnu, the original Prajapati, and Mitra are considered by the wise to be their respective presiding deities. Those five, namely sound, etc., regarded as the objects of speech, etc., are known as adhibhuta, related to the elements, and the senses of speech, etc., are called adhyatma, related to a subject. Manas, the mind, on the other hand, functions as the auxiliary sense in both groups of the five senses. This mind, assisted by the cognitive senses, grasps and recognizes the objects. Vikalpa denotes vividha klipti, that which is differentiated, and that is called modification. This modification is said to be the relationship between a quality and the object qualified. Vikalpa, polarization in object and quality, is of five types, 
classified according to being an object, a quality, activity, genus, or species. Dandin, a sannyasin stick, as an object, whiteness as a quality, movement as an activity, man as a genus, and ditta, a handsome dark-complexioned man conversant with every branch of learning, as species, are examples of these five classifications of vikalpa. Mind, in combination with the conative, active senses, contains sankalpa, will. Sankalpa is the elimination of indifference, which is known as udyoga, preparation, and, with the ego, relates to both the knowledge-acquiring and active senses. In the group of the cognitive senses, ahankara is identical with abhimana, the awareness of the knower in relating time and place to himself. An object is always cognized as Today this appears before me. In the active senses, on the other hand, ahankara operates as sangrambha, that taking in hand, undertaking or grasping, which is antecedent to sankalpa. In the group of the cognitive senses, buddhi is adhyavasaya, mental effort, apprehension of objects. Buddhi as Adhyavasaya implies avadharanam, the determination or restriction of objects to a certain instance or instances with exclusion of any other. The avadharana of objects is called nishchaya, decisive knowledge. In the group of the conative senses, buddhi functions as prayatna, persevering effort, endeavor. Scholars regard these thirteen varieties as instruments of cognition. The external instruments are ten in number, five cognitive and five active senses, whereas the internal instruments number three, manas, buddhi, and ahankar. These twenty-three are called vikaras, effects, The ten external instruments and the three subtle instruments produced from the gross effects, ahankara's components of vikarika and taijasa, constitute the cosmic subtle body, which is called viraja. Every individual subtle body differs in each jiva, living being. At the time of liberation, this product of the evolutionary process withdraws itself from the liberated being. The 23 resulting categories, starting from Mahat and ending with Vishesha, mutually assist each other in creating the egg. That golden egg became as bright as the thousand-rayed sun. In it, Prajapati, the four-faced god, was born as Viraj. Manu was born from Viraj, and the descendants of Manu are known as Manavas. This world, consisting of both movables and immovables, has originated from the Manus, headed by Marichi. So far I have disclosed only a fraction of my active state. Although the Shakti of consciousness is pure in essence, through contact with beginningless avidya, Nescience, caused by misery, birth, decay, death, and rebirth, Chit Shakti, the power of consciousness, manifests herself in an impure state. But when avidya is destroyed through contact with pure knowledge accompanied by pure deeds, she regains her original blissfulness.